Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to Predator Exotics. So today I'm bringing you guys another care guide for another mantis. This is actually our biggest mantid we have in our collection, and it is the Congo Green Mantis. This is a wonderful mantis that obviously originates from Congo in Africa, and it basically is the generic type of looking mantis. If someone was talking about a praying mantis, this is the kind of one that they would be describing. It's green in color and can reach sizes of up to a female of 70 to 80 millimeters, and then a male around 55 to 60 millimeters. So these guys can get pretty large. So a little background information, we picked this gal up um, not too long ago, a few months ago, and she is growing like crazy. She has gone from being the smallest one we had to now the largest one we have in our collection, and I'll give you guys a bit of a comparison now. So once again, we're going to be going through all the different things such as breeding, handling, you know, what kind of tank you want to be keeping them in. So let's get right in. So starting off with housing. So we keep this girl in a Nano 2020 Cube by Exoterra, but she has recently actually molted. So we're going to be upgrading this pretty soon. With most mantis, you know, the general rule is you want about three times the size of the mantis in height and about two times in width. This will apply to most mantis that you keep. And so it applies to this one. You want to make sure that there's enough in here, but you're not overcrowding the tank. These guys do have good grip and can climb the sides of the glass. So climbing things are not too necessary. You just want to make sure that they've got enough space to molt and enough drops and nothing's blocking their path. So let's move on to temperature. So you're going to want to keep these guys around room temperature. It's really easy. No extra heat is needed. So about 20 to 30 degrees is kind of the mid zone that you're going to be wanting to keep them in. And if it does drop a little below, it's actually quite beneficial for this mantis. If you're keeping this mantis at a higher temperature, then it's going to have a higher metabolism. And of course, it's going to want to be eating more. Whereas if it's a lower temperature, there'll be a lower metabolism and it won't eat as much, but it won't grow as quickly. Next up is humidity. So you're going to want to keep these guys at about 60% if if you've got a humidity gauge inside. If not, you're gonna be one spraying these guys at about every day, to be honest. You wanna keep this kind of like nice and moist at all times. And of course, they're gonna be drinking the droplets from the side of the tank. I'll throw up a video now of what that looks like that we just posted on our Instagram. So now that we've got through just the tank, the general tank that we actually hold it in and the different temperature and humidity, which is super easy. This is why I always recommend them as like beginner pets, especially for children. They're so easy to care for. Let's move on to feeding. Now, this girl is not a picky eater. They will eat pretty much anything you're putting down for them. Right now, we feed them on crickets, uh, but they will eat fruit flies as well. Once they get larger, they can go up to locusts and even doobie roaches, which would be insane. And we hope that we'll be showing you guys that in the future. We look to feed this girl every Tuesday and Thursday. Sometimes they'll be hungry on Tuesday and sometimes they won't be hungry on Thursday and vice versa. But I offer them on those two days every week. And uh, as you can tell, she is growing quickly. Throwing up a quick warning at the end of feeding, these guys are very cannibalistic, so do not house these guys together. Do not put them together. These are not like the other two that we have shown you. These guys are a solo one that you're going to want to keep individually, uh, which is going to make your breeding kind of hard. So like all mantids, and I already mentioned it, they do molt, and I'm going to throw up on screen the most recent molt that we've had of this mantid. Uh, which is pretty awesome. They're pretty cool to look at and especially if you catch them actually doing it It's cool to watch but normally most of them do that at night uh, So we don't really get to see it and we kind of miss it. So molting is a massive thing for mantis uh, You want to make sure that they do have enough space and it's humid enough in there because um, It's the number one killer of, of most mantids is having a failed molt which is really sad but you, you you know, sometimes it's up to chance, but most of the time you can make sure that they've got a good enough environment with good enough airflow uh, so they can molt nicely and keep growing. So now we're going to move on to sexing your mantis. This is so easy to uh, actually sex from the third instar is when you can sex them. This is a female that we have here. It is the abdominal section. So if I throw up the video now, you can see that if you count, we have six abdominal sections on this one here, which means that it is a female. And if they've got seven, then it is a male. Now, of course, this means that we are so happy we got a female uh, because it's gonna grow really large, but it means that we will be upgrading this tank size soon uh, to about a, probably a 20, 20, 30, uh, should give it enough room. So what happens when they actually become full adults? Well, the females will be bigger and bulkier with bigger wings, whereas the male will be thinner and slender with smaller wings. 
though that will be obviously a massive tell for if you're buying an adult to pair with um, but when they're younger definitely third in start count the abdomen parts easily tell which sex they are so before we actually move on to mating these guys we're going to talk about handleability so with most mantids i don't actually recommend um, kind of handling them unless they are super calm because you don't really want to stress these guys out as you can see um, she is jumping around. Uh, these guys are a jumper, so handling them can be quite difficult, uh, and especially you don't want to stress them out or injure them in any way. Um, this one has just molted, so definitely not wanting to stress her out too much um, or injure her, so I'm just going to let her chill in front of the cage. So let's move on to breeding. So about five or six weeks after they reach full adulthood, um, then that's kind of when you're going to want to be pairing and breeding them. But like I said, they are quite cannibalistic, so the chance of them actually failing the mating and the female eating the male is quite high. But like most ones, you want to put them in there on a full stomach or whilst they're eating, so the male can do his thing uh, and then you can kind of decrease the risk. But there is always that risk, so you've got to be careful. So after that, the female will lay the first batch of eggs and then two to four weeks afterwards will keep laying depending on feeding and temperature. And at the end of it, you'll have hundreds of little nymphs if you breed and uh, incubate them all successfully. So incubation is about six weeks long, but you've got to make sure that you do not let these guys dry out. So you want to make sure that these guys are kept moist to increase the chance of incubation on the eggs. So per average of clutch of eggs, you're going to get about 150 nymphs. So you've got to also make sure that you're prepared to keep and house all of these. Um, of course, they're going to be tiny when you actually first get them, but you're going to want to sell them off, give them away, have, have a plan before you actually start breeding these guys. So um, just a little quick thing at the end here, before you're actually looking into purchasing, this goes for most mantids, you're going to want to get it at about second or third instar um, to increase the chance, well, to decrease the chance of death and increase the chance for actually surviving and you raising this mantid. We bought this at third instar, so um, it's doing well. As you can see, she is growing like crazy, like the size here is ridiculous. Um, I'll give you guys a bit of a close up and I'm sure I've thrown a couple clips in before. But yeah, you're going to want to make sure that you're not buying a fresh new nymph because it just isn't uh, it isn't a high chance of surviving. You know, you've got 150 nymphs coming out of a, of a lay. Um, there's not a high chance. Of, <laughs> that's like, it's such a low chance that all of them are going to survive. Um, it is a sad thing, but it is just kind of how it goes. So if you're looking into buying one of these, make sure that you're getting it a second or third in star uh, and from a trusted breeder as well. Um, a few things about this girl uh, that I want to also discuss at the end of the video is, are we planning to breed it? The yes, yes is the answer. Um, whether it's this gal or a future one um, depends on kind of our setup and uh, you know if we're ready to house all of those nymphs. Um, like I said, it can be uh, quite a difficult thing. Uh, but yeah, we would love to breed mantids. I, I personally have found a love for mantids. I've said this before. Uh, and this one, just because of the size of it, is, is pretty cool and pretty cool to watch. Would I recommend this to uh, you guys? Yeah, hell yeah. This guy's awesome. Oh, well, this gal is awesome. Um, feeding is so cool. You know, just watching them in general, they become quite active, especially towards the night time. Uh, you can tell when the mantis is sleeping because it will sleep upside down or curled up. Um, but like kind of like mid dawn kind of uh, and like going into the night uh, They're like super active and they're walking around. So it's pretty cool to watch um, I know it's not the most handleable species uh, due to them jumping But you know, it's still pretty cool to watch them inside So I hope you guys have enjoyed another care guide on the the well, this was the Congo green mantis um, I'm planning to bring out more Mantis Care Guides in the future when expanding the collection, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Um, a lot of them are gonna be similar. It is one of those things where a lot of things apply to each one that you can carry over. A few things are specific to the species, um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, comment down below if you're looking to get a Mantis and what kind of Mantis you'd be looking to get. Um, and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any of our future content and don't forget to head over to our Instagram. Um, we're over a thousand followers now. We're over, I think we're at like 1200, which is crazy. You guys supporting us on there is ridiculous. And of course on YouTube, we are up there almost at 400 as well. Um, so we are really appreciating the support guys. So keep that up and we'll be bringing you guys more content in the near future. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.